Hello, namaste. I'm really happy to be here today. Um, my life as a photographer actually started in India, in this magical place, Varanasi, where I spent quite some time those years. I was looking for answers for certain basic questions about life. I, although I didn't receive those answers because the questions were too naive, but those years at some point started to evolve into photographs. I was doing uh, street photography for a while, and photography normally, and at least technically, are about one single moment of a time. But I was interested in to capture the continuity and depict the whole thing on one image. So I started to be experimenting with different, different techniques, and I spent quite a lot of time with the slit scan technology. This is the first camera I built in 2006. I bought a very cheap desktop scanner, take the sensor out, I wrote the software for that, and put it behind a camera lens, and started capturing life with that. The camera is stationary, and it captures just one single line that you see now, which is a so little fra fraction of space, it's so incomprehensible, it's so small, but once you render those lines next to each other, you receive a still image. It's like our present. If you just don't notice it. It's not a very new technique, actually. It was developed in the 1930s for uh, photo finish cameras. So that's what they use since then at Olympic Games and horse races. I traveled to big cities, finding those spots where I could uh, capture this never-ending human flow. This one is, for instance, from New York City. This is Times Square. So on the horizontal axis, you actually don't see space. So the, the left side is not left, it's uh, earlier, and the right side is later. So it does not make sense for these people to walk from left to right. So regardless where they were heading originally, on these images they all appear to be heading to the same direction. Actually, they are all walking backwards in time. So on the images, it looks like we are all marching together to the, to the same destiny that we we build together. This is actually in Hong Kong. It's a tree in the background. The dark uh, part is the trunk, and the upper part uh, was created by the leaves, uh, moved by the breeze. After the series, I started scanning trains, not because of the trains. I'm not a train spotter. But I realized one summer in uh, New York that uh, right uh, before the train arrives to the station, people posing really nicely, and they're already framed. Um, but this is a really, really small uh, period of time. So I had, but I could scan them. My camera though, was not good enough, so I had to get another one. I realized that uh, factories use the same type of cameras uh, for quality checking purposes. And I bought one of those and I put a system around it that allowed me to use it as a portable device. And I went back to New York and I started uh, scanning trains. I'm not really encouraging anyone to set up a system like that on a platform. They don't really like it. Um, that's me waiting for my interrogation. Uh, pretty shortly after uh, I did that first test shot, it was pretty gentle. I ended up with a $25 fine. It was a very good deal, but uh, I think that I couldn't keep working that way, so I had to figure something out, and I put the whole system together in my backpack. I made an iPhone application to control the camera, so I could work like that. I don't think it looks much less suspicious, but it, it, it gave me some sort of flexibility, so I could work easier. <laughs> so just some of the results. You can see the light is so even. That's because the whole train is happening in front of me, so it, every line, every single line is hit by the same source of light, so that's why it's so even and chemically clean. I wanted to depict people in, a, in this clean carriage and not something that reminds you something wobbly or, or dirty. And these are just so natural and, and neutral moments, kind of uh, honest, because people are not posing, although they look like that, but they don't know that they are actually going to happen on these images. So that's why I entitled the series Stainless. And you can also see how, how much detail the camera can capture, although the whole thing is, is moving that, that fast. And I'm, I'm really lucky because I was interested in programming and uh, digital technology when I was younger. 
um, I'm able to sort things out. So I always have to uh, make like at least 10 little applications from cold controlling uh, uh, different uh, problems of my images. So this is one of them that was, uh, that was con uh, correcting the, the wavy images that was created by my handheld camera because it's slightly moving. This is a nonlinear distortion uh, application that controlled the, or corrected the, the distortion that came from the changing speed of the train. And uh, this is a light flickering problem because the light is normally flickering if they don't use high frequency that my com camera cannot capture. Um, so they create these ugly vertical lines on my images. So I made this light meter that, that uh, was really easy to, to, to read and I could send to my friends. And before I traveled somewhere so I could see whether I could work or not, I didn't take any advantage of this actually because um, this is the instruction man manual because I sent it to my friend uh, to Tokyo who measured the light and the result was really bad. But I, I wanted to go to Tokyo anyway, so I went, just ignored the result. The thing is, he measured only three st stations. I measured kind of all, and I found five stations where the light was good for me, um, although the light was still really bad inside the train, so I had to uh, make this uh, thing that got rid of those ugly lines. And this is an example of the Tokyo subway system. Um, that's, that's probably my, my favorite subway system in the world. It's just so essential. And this is another one from Paris. So I'm kind of always balancing between the lines and uh, between the motion and between the stills and looking into the, between the seconds and between those details. And I, I wanted to emphasize more the, the relentlessness of all time. So I started working with, with videos a few years ago. And I started working with a high-speed video camera. That's just another industrial device that they use. And I keep adding locations. So far, I have six videos in the series. I'm capturing uh, waiting passengers on the platform from the train. And I'm really happy that uh, the last video that I captured uh, was made in Mumbai at the Dada station two weeks ago. And now I'm going to show you two minutes, just a two minute excerpt of uh, the 12 minute video. But first, I would like to show you how long two minutes is. So that, that was it. That's two minutes arriving on the platform. This was a voice of the train at Dada station. And now you're going to listen to it. If it's trash, expand it to two minutes. And so you will see how it looks, this two seconds in two minutes. And you will see how much life can be fit into two minutes or so two seconds.
two seconds of life. This is what I wanted to share today. Thank you very much. Thank you.